at the bookstore. Ladies, have you found anything new to read? Well, I don't even go by the bookstore anymore. I just use my fancy e-reader. But anyways, I found this new book at the top of the list. Have you guys heard of it? It's a thing it's called, like, Looking the Other Way. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a remake of the, it's not really a remake of The Great Gatsby, but it, like, goes along that. And it's basically Pamela's view of, um, what was going on throughout her And life for those of you who don't know, Pamela is the daughter of Daisy Buchanan, the protagonist in uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby. So what did you guys think of it? I actually really loved it. Um, while I was reading The Great Gatsby, actually, I actually wondered how Pammy might have felt about all the things her mother did, especially um, through all of the drama with her and Gatsby causing basically fights within the house. And even though she kind of denied she was causing a row in the house, she kind of did. And it was it was definitely very interesting to find out really how Daisy impacted the Buchanan family and the people who knew her. Yeah, it's definitely a different perspective, and especially because in the book, Pammy had a very, very small role. I mean, she would only come in like two or three scenes, but she was the only child in the book, so she offered a different perspective. Um, so, okay. and here today, for those of you who have not read the book, is the author, Miss Pamela Buchanan. Please welcome her to the studio. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So what's new? Well, things have been pretty good so far. I recently got engaged to the governor of New York. And I just, thank you. And I have an, um, a, a novel coming out, which actually made the New York Times bestselling list, which yes, I'm really excited like, about. So, thank you. We also heard about your new fundraiser. Yes, it's a charity organization to raise money for um, education in more of the, um, I guess, less fortunate areas of the city. Oh, that's a good And I see that your engagement ring is blue, not girl's best friend's diamonds. Can you explain that? <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of a funny story. So after, I guess, telling my life story to my husband, after he knew like, my background, we kind of decided to get um, blue. It symbolizes clarity, like a clear perspective on what's actually happening. No one's being clouded by money or any superficial thought. So your life story actually inspired your new book, right? Yes, it did. After, um, basically, our whole life was kind of exposed in Fitzgerald's um, novel, the Great Gatsby, which became very notorious, I wanted to kind of clear up my point of the story, kind of show my perspective on it, because, you know, growing up, I never knew any of the story. My mom didn't tell me any of it. It was all hidden. So I had to kind of put pieces of puzzle together on my own growing up, and I learned a lot of lessons from her mistakes, um, from her, like, I guess, the superficial, yeah, first, the superficiality of the whole situation. I really wanted to clear that up. So who's your audience when you're writing this book? Um, I mean, it's kind of like a really um, broad demographic, actually. I mean, I guess more like a young adults, adults, because I don't think it's more like lessons that I guess younger kids can really understand too much. But I would definitely say it's more for um, adults who are starting to form their, their lives, starting to make decisions about what they're going to do in the future and kind of cho how um, your mentality and perspective on life can kind of affect the choice that you make. Is your book meant to be inspirational to others or is it to tell all about your life? Um, it's a little bit of a combination of the both. I mean, it's supposed to be kind of, um, kind of, like, lesson teaching, I guess, morals, as well as, um, as far as, like, you know, making sacrifices for money. I don't really think that's the whole point. I mean, that doesn't really get you anywhere. As far as the tell-all part goes, um, most of my life story was already, um, as I said before, came out in, like, The Great Gatsby, but I just wanted to clear up my point of view, because he doesn't really talk about me that much, because it was, like, two when this was happening. So I wanted to share my insight on how much they kept hidden from me. Have you ever been confronted by someone about like your life and like the way that you like grew up and the way your mom treated you? Not directly confronted, but you know, I wasn't because I wasn't really part of it. I was always being raised by like a nurse or like a nanny. I wasn't I was only brought really out to show off. I mean I wasn't really considered part of like the family. No one really told me these things that were going on. So so all of this is basically a reflection of the fact that your upbringing in wealth kind of kept you from really knowing what was going on. Would you yeah. say that money as a whole kind of clouds your view of things? Well, I think it definitely clouded my mother's view, but it certainly did not cloud mine. That's like the whole point that I want to make across, that I'm not clouded by shallowness or the um, greed of wealth. And I know like, a lot of people actually kind of expected me to like follow my, my mother's footsteps and be like a beautiful little fool as she always like thought I was going to be, but 
it's the exact opposite. I don't want to have anything to do with that. So you have no association with your parents whatsoever anymore? No association. I didn't take any money from them. I earned it all on my um, own. Could you give us a day in the life of Miss Pamela Buchanan? Just one of your normal days. What do you do? Well, I guess I'll start off with what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, like I guess I get up early. Um, I guess clean up the house a little bit, uh, straighten up. Then I am going to go get prepared and go to the publishing firm. And we're going to talk about my book tour, which is coming up in a month. And we're going to be start planning out how it's going to um, go. We're coming up with great ideas for publicity. Um, where we're going to have book signings, um, what, what um, store are going to be selling books. We have a lot to discuss tomorrow. That will probably take most of the day. And then I am going to go pick out um, wedding clothes to do it with my family this, and later this afternoon. So that's kind of a typical day. So you do the work revolving around your book. You don't have someone doing it for you? No. Okay. And just out of curiosity, are your parents involved at all in your wedding plans? Are they even going to be in attendance? Um, well, they will be in attendance, but I'm not taking um, like charity funds. I really want to do this on my own. It's something that it's like the whole point that I'm trying to do. Yes. I mean, I guess there, I guess this question kind of pops up. They're not really offended by the book, but I guess um, we have very different um, perspective on yes. life and what morals are important. So, could you give us maybe a day in the life of when you were younger with this uh, with Daisy? Yes. I remember we would I would wake up and I'd be in like the nursery room and there'd be a nanny there and she'd come in and she'd bring like the tray of like things in the morning and then I have to I have to put on like some like starchy dress and then I I would just like, sit you know most of the day play piano or read or you know like, I wasn't allowed to go to the to go by them like my parents and the family I was kind of kept more of a distance but they were entertaining sometimes they would call me out come to, you know, say hello to the guests, but usually I was kind of on my own for most of the day. So there was really no, like, social interaction or anything like that? No. I mean, I guess they, I was sent to boarding school later, in private school, etc. So, no, no And it's been suggested by a lot of literary critics of The Great Gatsby, the book, of course, which describes your mother's life, um, that you kind of were treated almost as a doll growing up. Essentially, yeah, I was really just there to like show off, just to add to mother's perfect life, and another attempt of hers to stay from marriage. Yeah. Yes. So going into this whole marriage thing, I mean, do you have a little opinion about uh, whether your parents should have stayed together or should um, your mother have gone off with Gatsby? Well, I guess my philosophy on it, in fact, is that she was in love with Gatsby subconsciously, but she wouldn't admit to it. She kept denying the fact because. She wanted to keep her perfect life with Tom. And what Gatsby didn't realize is that he was, he was so pompous and narcissistic that he didn't want to um, accept the fact that she wasn't going to leave Tom for him. Because he, he made his whole life about getting her back, winning her back. And he wouldn't accept the fact that it wasn't going to happen. And I feel that um, Tom, like, really wasn't even, like, it was so, like, like she, he really, like, hurt her with, like, his, um really not faithful or anything. So, do you feel that your parents have learned anything from your relationship with the governor? Um, I mean, you, one thing can't really change their personality. I mean, they still are interested in saying things that values that they wanted years and years ago. So, I don't feel like that, I feel like that it changed too much, but I hope it's more inspiring to others who are starting to settle down. Was the Great Gatsby an accurate depiction of your parents' lives? Yes, it was. And they're okay with that? They haven't changed? They like being notorious. They like the fame. Like, you know, the fabulous life. The fabulous life, exactly. And because of this, I mean, it seems that you kind of do have your share in the fame of being an author, but is, is your being an author kind of a reflection of the fact that you kind of grew sick of um, being in the spotlight all the time with them in a negative light? I mean, I wasn't really that much in the, in the spotlight. I felt like I was like alienated, isolated yes. for most of the time. But I was brought out occasionally, I guess, to, like you said, yeah. show off, negative. So I guess I like the positive reflection on um, the work that I've done instead of just being there because, you know, I'm supposed to be. So I, I guess it's nice to meet different types. So we've made a little clip comparing your life and Daisy McKinnon's life, and so we're just going to roll it now.
Here at the view, we were lucky enough to obtain some photos of Daisy's daily life. And here we have a picture of her house, and you can see the fabulosity of her, her lifestyle and the way that she was accustomed to grand things. Um, of course, you know, she would have people helping her wash up, and even here you can see that she's having a conversation on the telephone and someone else is holding the telephone for her. And also, a lot of the house decorations is very grand, all gold-plated. Oh, um, for the Yeah, and excess curtains everywhere. As Pamela said earlier, like, her mom almost used her, like, to show off as, like, an ornament, like, I guess, for the house. And here you can see her, how, like, she's, like, caressing her daughter, making sure that she looks good and that her hair looks fine. And even Daisy's saying things like, I hope she'll be a, a little fool. That's the best thing a girl can be in a world, a beautiful little fool. Pam was brought out to meet Gatsby in front of um, the other guests, and she was almost used to show off. You know, she would say things like, bless precious, that's because your mother wanted to show you off. And you can see Nick and Gatsby in the background kind of giving awkward glares. Of course, she had the money and the wealth to dress up greatly, and she would go out to Gatsby's parties, and as Gatsby would describe her, her voice was almost filled with money. And even those around her, they're not wearing, like, the jewelry and the hat that she's wearing, and they're not, like, able to have those kind of items. Of course, she still goes back to Gatsby for a little bit and does think about her relationship with Gatsby. However, she ends up leaving with, Gat uh, with Tom, and they go off out into the world and just basically leave their whole life from Long Island behind. And she's able to just leave other people ruined and heartbroken because as long as like her life and she's successful and like socially able to keep living the way that she is.